Hello there. Man, I've been so busy lately. You know, there's... I found out one of the most unpleasant jobs in the world is laying down tile. <laughs> it's so horrible. I've never done it before. And I did it all day yesterday, and I, it was painful and backbreaking. I was either bent over or on my knees the whole time, you know, arranging tiles. Kind of unpleasant. You ever heard this old saying? And it's an old saying, uh, I think it's a passage from the Bible. Yeah, I know it is. I can't remember book and verse. Um, says uh, something to the effect of, don't uh, look at the splinter in your fellow man's eye when you can't see the log in your own. Isn't that how it goes? It goes kind of roughly like that. You know, it's very apropos and uh, extremely accurate. And uh, I'm not... I, I have to preface this video by saying, importantly, that what anybody believes is none of my concern. Okay? I'm really not. I, I like looking at the inconsistencies of things, whether something's hyperlogical or whether it's just you know, completely off the wall nutty. Um, I used to know uh, a couple of, uh, of uh, atheists. Uh, typically, <clears throat> and that, of course, is a hyperbole, and a generalization, yet, however, necessitatively so, is generally accurate. They're extremely arrogant. Uh, here's a quote of mine, and uh, I found this to be entirely accurate. In genuine, uh, roundabout, atheism is a bus stop between uh, religions yeah, and uh, divine wisdom, kind of like a halfway point. It's really not halfway. It's actually like just outside the city. Like if all religions were... Chicago, <laughs> there's, a, there's an appropriate city for it. <laughs> Full religions are Chicago. Atheism is just a bus stop, like, yeah, just outside of Chicago. I won't say which side of the city. <laughs> um, and divine wisdom. But most people, they land there, but they never leave there. You ever, <clears throat> when I used to live in, uh, in East Bay, uh, California with my wife, uh, you notice one guy, he like lived at the bus stop when it would be rainy, he'd go inside that little glass shelter. And when it was okay, you know, he lived in a little tent behind there. So atheism really is like that. The people that like, I want to get out of the city, but they don't ever really end up going anywhere. So they get out and they kind of like will point back into the city, you know, all the hypocrisy and the, the corrupt politicians and all the ills and plagues and boils festering boils that go on in the city, but they don't actually ever go anywhere. <clears throat> in genuine atheism, by the way, is, of course, a belief system. By the way, a Philippus 29d of uh, <clears throat> the works of Plato is the first mention of atheos. And it's not adios, it's atheos, the divine, rather the theurgic substrate to phenomena. Yeah, I think you know what phenomena is, right? materiality, composite phenomenality, consubstantiality between many things. However, a true atheist, by the way, you probably never heard this, you can look it up, is a metaphysical atheist. And what this means is that completely irrelevant of discussing, I'm going to use my little Tesla doll that was sent to me here. Here we go. <laughs> completely irrelevant of, uh, of God. Yeah, there's two people arguing God, no God. By the way, you first have to deposit something before you can negate it. You can't just start negating something. You first have to posit it and the parameters of that thing. Completely <clears throat> ignoring the whole God, no God thing of religions, and I don't care about any belief systems at all, including atheism. By the way, one of the biggest insults ever thrown at me is to call me not fat, bold, or tattooed. I care less about that, which is accurate, of course. That's not an insult, that's accurate is that people will call me, I don't know why people keep calling me Freemason. I, I have absolutely no connection to that whatsoever, nor would I ever. That's insulting. But the biggest one is to call me an atheist. I'm certainly not that at all. But it is a belief system. I don't even have heard of this, but it's called metaphysical atheism. And completely ignoring God, it's about the denial of the substrate to phenomena. Um, where a phenomena, of course, would be the sock puppet, for example. It's not a sock puppet. Yay! And then completely ignoring denying, excuse me, in the case of metaphysical atheism, the hand that's actually animating the puppet here, you know, my hand shaking this little puppet, the, uh, the substrate to phenomena, i.e. noumena, 
that is what genuine atheism is. Because the word is atheos, not adios. Not the Spanish word adios, like adios, amigo. No, ad no. it's not that word. It's atheos, the, the opposite, the absence of the divine, the theurgic principles of noumena, the substrate, the metaphysical subjects which precede phenomena. In the case of the radio analogy, it would be, of course, the signal. Yeah. So let's just forget about discussing this whole God, no God thing. And once again, as, as I said, as my quote, is that atheism is just a bus stop outside of the city of religion. But it doesn't get anywhere. It's like, I don't know, we'll never know. You know, there might be some big questions out there, but... So I don't know, and you'll never know either. That's uh, something, uh, by the way, that uh, uh, this really smug guy on uh, on uh, TV has his own little talk show. I know you know who I'm talking about. He always uh, wears like atheism on his uh, shirt sleeve, like he's so superior to everybody else. Once again, it's just like the person is like, I'm smart enough to get outside of the city where all the craziness is going on. But I really haven't gone anywhere. I'm just at the bus stop outside of the city. We're like, <laughs> I'm just not bothered by the crazy people in the city anymore. I want to get away from that. But getting back to the point again, metaphysical atheism, this denial of a, of a, a substrate to phenomena, this principle uh, from the passage of the Bible where you point out the splinter in someone else's eye, which would be like uh, pointing out, of course, the absurdities of 10 million different religious beliefs, but you can't see the log in your own because this, you know, this finger shaking at the absurdity of religion is missing the fact that, you know, the absurdity that they hold and cleave to is so incredibly enormous. It just makes absurdities of uh, things within doctrine, you know, religious doctrine, which I'm not interested in discussing at all you know, look so sane by comparison. Um, they posit things that are far, far, far more nonsensical, implausible, illogical. Um, one thing that uh, so-called atheists engage a lot in, and I'm not interested in going after atheists, I'm really not, I'm just talking about the absurdity of it and how more absurd it actually is on its own basis than all the things that they love shaking their finger at is uh, dis displacement genesis. You know, Genesis is not in denial. I'm not talking about the Genesis of the Bible, but, uh, you know, of life, Zoe. You know, that's not in denial. What they do is they'll displace Genesis from this earth to, uh, well, it's probably microbes hitched a ride on a comet or an asteroid or meteorite and it landed on earth. What that does is it completely dissolves them of any uh, plausibility of coming up with Genesis here on Earth. Well, it came from somewhere else. Where? Who knows? You know, we'll never know that. That's just, that's just such a lazy excuse. It's completely, you know, ridiculous. It's not ridiculous to actually place um, microorganisms on a piece of rock, and we know certain uh, germs and whatnot will survive uh, the vacuum of space and the extreme cold. Well, we know that. That's not the implausible part. It, the point is, is that the entire foundation that they've built, which atheism is a belief system, has absurdities infinitely more grandiose than anything within any religion ever could. Um, just ask them, like, where's energy? You know, they can't, like any scientist, most scientists, or not scientists at all, mathematicians, you know, they uh, are atheists, and uh, they can't define the word energy, and they can't define the word field. You ask an atheist about, well, Let's just forget about God. Let's just forget about everything. What about, you know, nihil ex nihilo, from not comes not. We first have to talk about energy, the release of energy, the manifestation of things, the generation of matter. Genesis, once again. We, we have to get back to Genesis, and I don't mean the Genesis of the Bible or of any religious document, but genuine, <laughs> genuine Genesis, because you can't pause it. From not comes not, or nihil ex nihilo. And this is where the atheists, not literally, but essentially does. They get on their knees and they pray. It's like, oh dear God, regarding energy, oh dear God, please grant us this one miracle. <laughs> you know, they can't tell you anything. It's okay that they shake their finger at absurdities and other things, but they themselves 
cleave to and believe something infinitely more obtuse, illogical, laughable, and they have no explanation for it, nor anything logical. I mean, where, whence energy? Well, they, they've never even defined energy. They can't. They never have. Don't take my word for it. Go find one. Where say, ask an atheist. Excuse me. You know, let's talk about true metaphysical and ontological genesis. You know, because we can't posit all, uh, the Big Bang. I actually love using that word. Big Bang. <laughs> so everything came from nothing, right? Now, even what they'll say, and of course, the Big Bang never happened, by the way. And that's also the name of a book, although that book called The Big Bang Never Happened is kind of ridiculous. Did you know the Big Bang was, I forget the Catholic priest's name, but the Big Bang actually came from the mind of a, I think it's 16th century, it could be 17th century, Catholic priest. Did you know that? So the thing that all the atheists cleave to, the Big Bang, their primordial genesis point was created by a, uh, invented whole cloth by a Catholic uh, priest. Isn't that interesting? They say, oh, something, there's nothing there at all. All of a sudden, just supermassive energy for no reason whatsoever, just like, pew, poofed, <laughs> poofed into existence, and so did everything else. But I can't think of anything, because all the things that people point to in religion, they, that's absurd. Yeah, it's crazy religious talk. I can't think of anything more ridiculous, nonsensical, absurd, poppycock, uh, Bullocks, nonsense, Big Bang. So that sounds like uh, some sort of religious belief. That's right, the Big Bang is that first the universe was empty and nothing, and all of a sudden from nowhere for some reason we don't know, energy decided to be released and everything <laughs> came <laughs> It's crazy! Crazy! That's a belief system. Not only that, it's a really crazy one, too. Hmm. Here's a quote you'll find in the definition. By their own definition, by the way, they wrote this. They. Yep. And I'm not really going after the atheists. I'm just pointing out the facts as a belief system. Atheists reject the existence of gods or gods in favor of a higher absolute, quote-unquote, such as humanity. I can't think of anything more removed from a higher absolute nothing than humanity society by and large is crazy there's no such thing as truth by consensus nothing true is popular nothing popular is true humanity refers to two-legged bipedal creatures that are consubstantial uh, spirit and matter um, beings made of a meat suit that is full of uh, uh, blood, urine, and uh, partially or fully digested uh, rotting food matter. You, you, so, your higher absolute. Now, these are their words, not mine. Atheism rejects gods and gods for a higher absolute, such as humanity. Referring to people. Society always is self-destructive. Definitionally, it always has been. And the bigger it is, the faster it self-destructs. Boom! Undeniable. And humanity is composed of a bunch of spirits walking around in the delusion that think that they're uh, flesh and blood meat suits. So that's your higher absolute. A bunch of uh, ignorant spiritual beings having a physical experience in a decomposing meat suit. That is the complete opposite of a higher absolute. If someone said, my highest absolute is uh, belief in uh, each other. Like, oh, well, that's kind of noble, but what you're really saying is your highest absolute is uh, ignorant, bipedal human beings in a decomposing meat suit. That's your highest absolute. Well, now, let's pause the record there. <clears throat> now, that's not me saying that. That's them saying that. Mm. I don't care what anybody believes. But if you're going to point out the splinter in your brother's eye, you got a splinter in your eye, you first might want to look in the mirror and notice the giant log 
in your own eye. Like, oh my god, I got a billion splinters. In my <laughs> it's crazy. Humanity is just a little less than sane. Tell me what you think. I love to read every comment, even the bad ones. I hate you with this video. It made me angry. Meow. Meow. <laughs> Um, maybe I'm as exhausted from all that work I did yesterday. Believe it or not, even though I'm fat and squishy, mostly tattoo ink and body fat, I actually did a lot of hard labor yesterday in extreme heat because ain't no air conditioner in my cabin. Or electricity for that matter either. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.